Hey there guys, this is Tyler, and welcome back to another video, or just stream, sorry. Welcome back to FNAF News Live. So pretty much, um, yeah, if, if you're in the FNAF community, you know what's going on <laughs> today. Um, yeah. Hold on, let me select the music, hold on. <laughs> Hmm. Hold on, here we go. Nice. Okay. Hello Poochamish, welcome to the stream. Hold on. to be an 11 welcome to the stream check okay so uh yeah if you all right so basically the veda which is a graphics card or tech related company that security breach is associated with they're doing a live discussion today at 11 and we're gonna be watching it on stream if it comes out to the public, which it's most likely going to, because I know some people that have actually made accounts. But, um, yeah. Hello, normal person. Hello, Lily Storm Zero Ray. Welcome to the stream. Hello, Glitch Bunny. Nice to see you guys, indeed. Oh, yep. Yeah, we got 9,000 subscribers and 200 followers on Twitter. Because I made a banner tweet, I think. I don't know. But yeah, before this whole thing starts, I will go over the other piece of news we got here today for FNAF News Live, because there is more to this. So, but first things first, I will go over details about the showcase. So on the left is the talk schedule. This will last from 11 to 11.40, which is 40 minutes EST, by the way. We are like 30 plus minutes early to this. So yeah. So on the right, so on the right side. So both Scott and Steele have said something regarding this. Scott has said, I watched the video myself for the first time a couple days ago. And just to let you know what to expect, the interview really focuses more on the technology. Hello, CZ Anus, welcome to the stream. Focuses more on the technology than the game itself. So there won't be any new teasers or anything like that. It's more a discussion on the cool tech used in modern games, and it's really interesting for those who want to learn more about current gen retracing and things like that. But it also shows you some of the faces behind the mad lads over at Steel Wool. It was a neat thing to watch. I think you all will enjoy it. So yes, yeah, Scott confirms nothing like uh, nothing big will be in the um, showcase. However, Steel Wool has also said something. On Twitter, <clears throat> as you have likely heard, Steel Wolf Studios will be participating in the Veta GTC 2021 Tech Talk. We have worked closely with the Veta to implement. Hold on. 
implement their latest technology, RTX UI, for the PC version of the upcoming title, Finance of Freddy's Security Breach. We will be going over how the use of R RTX GI has vastly improved the spookiness in Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex. We want to emphasize that there will be no new content shown, though there will be a moderated Q&A to answer technical questions. We know how excited you all are about Security Breach, and we're excited too. If you're interested in some tech talk for the RTX GI technology we're using, sign up and watch. Thank you for being amazing fans. Steve the Studios. Yeah, they won't talk about the release mostly discussion, so yeah. I'm still gonna watch it though in case, like, there's interesting things, and as well, um... Another thing. Um, yeah, the moderated Q&A. But yeah, see, this is one reason why I heavily prefer Steel Wool over Illumix. They actually tell people that there's not gonna be anything huge, while Illumix is just, just silent about everything. <laughs> TikTok, no. Hell no. Hail to the no. <laughs> okay. And so then, as well, on the left is the talk schedule. Daco did a video talking about it. Yeah. I will be ready to defend Steel Wool today. <laughs> on Twitter. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So the talk schedule, including estimated time. So again, estimated time, not exactly. Um, so it could either go longer or it could be cut early. Yeah. So the first thing is it'll show the security breach trailer at the start, which is two minutes long. And this is not a new trailer. If you go to the link that's provided, it's the trailer from February of this year. It was the, the one from, it, yeah. Yeah, you know which one. It's yeah. Um, so the second thing that'll happen is they'll they'll welcome everyone and introduce the developers of Security Breach, Steel Wool, two minutes. Um, then after that, which will be about 12 minutes, start the discussion about the developer and the game. This will help us to get a further overview of things. So here are the questions they'll probably ask, and Steel Wool will provide answers. Can you tell us more about Steel Wool? I played your last FNAF game, Help Wanted, on Oculus, and parts of it scared me. I had to put it down at one point. You definitely seem to have a strong history with this game. Second question, what's it like to make not just a FNAF game, but the first modern FNAF using advanced technology? Then the third question, Steel Wool is a relatively small developer, and less than 20 people are making FNAF Security Breach. What do you think about where the industry is at today with the team and project sizes? So if you've always wanted to know why Security Breach is somewhat taking longer than usual games, and yeah, it's because, as you just heard, there's less than 20 people in the Steel Wool Studios team, which is really impressive if they made a great game like Help Wanted and presumably Security Breach. So yeah, everyone left. <laughs> Because I just said Steel Wool is better than a Lumix. <laughs> By leaks. <laughs> or school. That too. What do you think about my art on Twitter? On I, I just post the one I make fun of Pogos and Lance Leo. Oh, I saw that. It's great. <laughs> FNAF versus Pogos. Dun dun dun. So, okay. The fourth thing is they'll discuss the technology. To discuss the technology, ray tracing is being used, and this is one of the first games to use RTXG. It may be the first to use these technologies on a PS5. By the way, this is tw this is also 12 minutes. 12 minutes. <laughs> 20, 12 minutes now. So the questions. There's four for this one. What's that development been like? Working with the PS5 and reach ray tracing is brand new, and you're at the forefront of it. Has, any, has anything worked differently than you expected? You're one of the first developers to make use of the RTXG on multiple platforms. What sort of challenges have you encountered? From a te technical perspective, talk about the platform differences. What have you learned? What have you learned are the de development differences making a game for both the PS5 and RTX PC? This is very easy. Did for VR. Yep, my sister will buy Security Breach and will play it every day. So yeah, another reason 
that I feel like Security Breach is taking longer is because Steel Wool is one of the first indie, not just indie, but first developers ever, ever to use this new technology to use this new technology for a game. That's why it's probably taking longer because they're having challenges. Because again, they're at the forefront of this whole thing, or the, the whole full full front of this technology for gaming in general. So it'll be incredible. So number five, talk about the fan base. By the way, this is eight minutes, and oh boy, this is a big game series made by a small developer, but has millions of fans. There's some good fans, but then there's the other fans. <laughs> What's that been like? You've worked in the series before. <laughs> what are the challenges of making the expect? What? What are the challenges of meeting the expectations of such a larger fan base? I imagine that could be challenging. You bet. Because <laughs> I remember on Help Wanted's anniversary last year, they didn't post like anything related to security breach except for like fan art of FNAF One, and then people got mad at them. Hashtag show for an FSB, and then yeah, so they're not familiar with this technology, and that they're supposed to be. Yeah, pretty much. I feel like that's what's going on. All right, see you later, Eleva. Then six, which is five minutes long, wrap up an open-ended discussion. Anything else you want <clears throat> to cover that we haven't talked about, or anything brought up before that could use some more elaboration? If nothing in particular is highlighted, I'll go back over some of the prior subjects and ask some more questions on it. Thank this deal developers by name and provide links to the latest on the NAT security breach. And then finally, the open, moderated, no less, Q&A that is going to be around 15 to 20 minutes long. Which is, yeah, okay. So, we get to see some people from Steel Bowl in person. That's something. That's something cool. Um, hold on. Hello, Purio RE. Welcome to the stream. So, that's pretty much, like, all we know so far about the Nevada Showcase. That's, like, concrete. Um, yeah, Scott and Sewell have confirmed things, and there's a schedule for it that's been at least proven to most likely be legit. Yeah, the, the showcase still isn't here yet. We're just waiting for that. Sorry, I was in the back room. This is nice. I like it there. <laughs> so, yeah, while we wait for the Nevada showcase, K to video games about that easy. Yeah, making a game's not like. It's, it's not, it's not, you can't do it with the press of the button. There's just a lot of stuff to it. But while we wait for the Nevada showcase, I'll go over the piece of news for today. So the next piece of news is about the breaking wheel cover being revealed. So if you don't know, the breaking wheel is the second story in Fazbear Frights number seven, the cliffs. The cliffs is the featured story, but originally the featured story, the first story with the cover and everything was going to be the breaking wheel. But however, this, so let me read what Scott said on Reddit. I wanted to share something with the community. It was noticed by many people that the breaking wheel was supposed to be the feature story of Fazbear Frights number seven, but was later changed to the cliffs. People have speculated that it was because the story was too gruesome, but actually it was because the cover art was too scary. I thought you might want all to see what it looked like. Hello, Nathan. Welcome to the voice chat. Wait. Huh. Oh, he left. So pretty much, um, the breaking wheel was originally, yeah, going to be the feature story of Fazbear Frights number seven, but got changed to the cliffs because of the cover art. And in this one instance, I actually do understand Scott's decision here because, okay, like, sure, the story's gruesome. Yeah, kids shouldn't be reading it if it's gruesome, but the cover art, yeah, I feel like if it's like too scary for children, is. It's not gonna stop children from like passing by it in the store or something. Like, like you just like you have your five-year-old child just with you at Walmart, and then they just see this cover. Like, that's not gonna go over well. The story itself can be gruesome. Like, 
This book, I'll get into the review that I'll post in a few days that's finally almost finished. This book's, this Fazbear Fright story is gruesome, but yeah, the title, not the title, the um cover change, I understand. And yeah, this is basically, yep. <laughs> uh, this is cool. I like it. It's really nice. But yep, again, implications. And yeah, Nathan returned. Hey, Nathan. Hey, what's up, Tyler? How you doing, man? Good. You're up early. It's 10.34 a.m. for me. Oh, yeah, that's right, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, I, I heard you're gonna stream, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm streaming in about 15 minutes. Ah, nice. While we wait for the showcase to come out, I'm just covering up, I'm just going over the other piece of news. Okay. No, yeah, you're actually doing something good because during the presentation, like, when the presentation starts, like, you can be covering the stuff live. So that's actually really smart. Yes. And, uh, alright. That was your intention, right? I guess so. On on Twitter, Johnny Blocks like found something like a policy about like recording and audio taping and that stuff. You're allowed to do it apparently. People thought at first you couldn't, so he mm -hmm. took down his stream. But then like he read more into it and it said that you were allowed to. So then, yeah. Well, I'm just gonna record it for other people so other people can watch it because not everyone was able to make an account for it. Yeah, I don't have an account. I'm like relying on uploads this time around. I might make an account when, like, if I if I get through all the news before 11, I'll make an account real quick if I can. Yeah, I'm not actually going to be keeping the video. I'm just going to stream it and then immediately, like, I'm even going to be taking notes during the presentation. And then immediately afterwards, I'm just going to start writing my script. So, really, it's just there for people to watch it live and then it's going to be gone. Yeah. So, I, I don't think I'm going to get in trouble for that well, because the video, the evidence is going to be deleted way before they can find it. Yep. So, the next piece of news is. Um, Fazbear Frights number 11 has been revealed to be a thing, but the big thing with this is, though, is this is going to be the last Fazbear Frights book, and there will be an extra one. Uh, so here, from the number one New York Times bestselling author and creator of Finance Freddy's, don't miss this 12th book box set, which includes stories that were left on the cutting room floor from books 1 through 11. All 11 Fazbear Frights books in one amazing box set, plus a 12th book of bonus stories, stories that didn't make the cut for the first 11 books. Finance of Freddy's creator Scott Coffin spends three sinister novel lengths in each of the book of this collection with stories from different corners of his series canon. So yeah, the 11th Fazbear Frights book, whatever it is, there's no title or cover revealed. It's just called an AFK book currently. <laughs> um, it's going to be the last one, and there will be an extra 12th one that will include bonus stories that did not make the first 11, that did not make the series pretty much. So like, bonus content. And this book 12 is not gonna actually be sold physically by itself. If you want to get it physically, you, you have to get it in this box set collection or online. And Scott clarifies this on Reddit. Hey everyone, I wanted to mention a small note about Book 12. While it's true that a physical copy of Book 12 won't be sold outside the full series collection, for now at least, I'm going to figure out some way for people to easily get it without having to buy the whole series again. I'm not sure if it'll be a cheap ebook or what, but I'll figure out something. So uh, that doesn't yeah. sound really nice. That kind of sucks. I mean, they should have had like something physical because like. How, like how you already own the rest of the collection how is people who already own the rest of the collection they're just gonna have to buy every single book again if they want to complete their collection that to me that was the that was a very poor move on on scholastic and scott's part Pres i think presumably the extra books gonna come out with like as soon as the 11th book comes out so why not like not have a collection but have the 11th and 12th book together like two and one for physical release by the way uh-huh yeah perhaps 
see, there's not really anything else to say, but I'm gonna miss Fazbear Frights. I preferred it over the original trilogy, and it's actually a great, it's one of the few book series I actually like. <laughs> reading. I'm not really a reading guy, so. And plus it brought fans together. That's the important thing. Theories and everything. Yeah, what do you think of the idea that it's set after Security Breach? I personally don't know. Don't know? Hmm. I guess we can move on to the next piece of news, which is the another book-related thing. There will be a book called How to Draw Five Nights at Freddy's, an AFK book, which the an AFK book will probably be updated to something else. Hello, Dial Worlds. Welcome to my channel. Um, hey, welcome. I remember, like, back in 2017 on my old streams, whenever there was a new person to my channel, I just had, like, a... I pat my legs or something. I don't know. And then... Tyler, I was... And then I was in my stream overlay, and then, uh... And then I just got the somebody subscribe notification scared the shit out of me. Oh my god. And then my friend <laughs> Halo, when he used to stream, he would do the same but with a train whistle. Oh really? Yeah. For introducing new members of the channel. But anyway, um yeah, how to draw Five Nights of Freddy's, which is pretty much like I'm pr I'm pretty sure is a book on how to draw findings of Freddy's characters and the description that comes with it is learn how to draw all your favorite findings of Freddy's characters filled with all your favorite characters from the best-selling horror video game series Five Nights at Freddy's this is how to draw wait this this how to draw is packed with step-by-step -step instructions to create your own artwork of these terrifying creations the game is all here from mainstays like Freddy and Chica to the twisted and glam rock animatronics with 96 pages of draw drawing fun perfect for any Freddy Fazbear pizza super fan. Oh yeah. And the release date is January 4th, 2022. So yeah. This will be a year after Security Breach or months after. I'm making art of FNAF. Nice. Russian base. Thanks for watching. Oh hey, goes to 680 welcome to stream. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I love it. I gotta head out, Tyler. I'll see you, Nathan. Oh my god, there are 17 people already waiting for my stream. How how is this happening right now? Zero idea. Your channel's alive again, Nathan. Dude, yeah, my channel, like, died and then came back somehow. I don't know how the frick that happened. Didn't you All post, right, like, Tyler, a... you have fun, man. All right, see you, Nathan. Peace. Peace. What, you were saying? I I cut you off completely. Did there. you, like, post, like, a popular video or something recently? Uh, yeah, you know, the, the Security Breach, uh, NVIDIA stuff actually did pretty good, so... Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> you know, I don't... All right, Tyler, well, you have a fantastic rest of your day, man. See ya. Hello, that one egg. Welcome to the stream. Why, hello there, old sports. You know, I don't really see the point on why the breaking wheel old cover was scary. For me, it looks cool. Again, it was changed most likely because of the fact that... Again, kids, you can't, like, okay. The book can be gruesome as much as it wants, it already is. But kids, it won't stop children from passing by the book at the stores and seeing the cover. Doesn't matter if they buy the book or not. And yeah, you can see the correlation there. So the next piece of news is the Ultimate Custom Night um, ports, presumably like the console ports, the mobile ports are already out, I believe. But yeah, the console ports, or iOS ports, I forget what kind of ports it is, or etc. But that's coming, and there was a teaser posted by Click Team on Twitter with the tag, who, with the tweet, who has completed 5020 in UCN. I will soon, hopefully. But there is a, there was a hint, there was like a little puzzle here in the teaser, which formed a release date, 
at Super Stew HD or Super Stew Gino Gain on Twitter, found it out. The numbers on the camera: zero four thirty twenty one, or perhaps April thirtieth twenty twenty one, aka the release date. Clever, clever, click team, and click team pretty much confirmed it by telling him well done because he figured it out whatever ports this is for is coming out on the 30th which is the day after my birthday oh boy <laughs> so yeah and plus yeah see look the kitchen camera says four the supply closet camera says three to the 30 and then to one the hall cameras hello spongy welcome to the stream poggies up oh, see a normal person thanks for coming See, so yeah, I, yeah, pretty clever, I'll be honest. Nice one, click team. So then, for our next piece of news, we get to a company who's not so clever. <laughs> Alumix. We love Alumix, y'all. Alumix is the best. <laughs> so pretty much, um, today, this was posted yesterday, 20 hours ago, but as of now, this evening, um, catch up with melted chocolate bonnie, chocolate bonnie, and Easter bonnie before the hop chocolate event melts away at 5 p.m. PDT today. So pretty much either like 7 or 8 p.m. P EST. I forget which one, but it's like somewhere in that area. The new event starts tomorrow at the same time. See, so yeah, 8 p.m. EST. And we can't wait to see just what's going on as we head into the woods. So this is either going to be like new skins or a blast from the past of the forest skins which is gonna drive the fan base of FNAF up the fucking wall <laughs> and part of me feels like it's not gonna be blast from the past because it does they usually say it's gonna be blast from the past but I don't know maybe it's a part two to the, like the forest skins like Woodland Toy Freddy, Boulder Toy Bonnie, Swamp Baby etc Hello, Nick Penn. Welcome to the stream. Where are the new characters at Alumix? Everyone likes Alumix? Yeah, we all love Alumix, man. Alumix is the best. Mm. Click Team and Steel Wolf and Scott. Fuck you all. Alumix is the best. <laughs> I'm joking, obviously. Alumix is the worst. <laughs> EA. <laughs> but I'm not going to get into that. So expect a new event tonight or a blast from the past. And the previous event is probably going away. Where are the freaking characters of Lumix? We need Funtime Freddy because he's cool and lefty. <laughs> Lumix is bad. Steel Wool, good. Lumix, bad. At least, at least Steel Wool tells us nothing special is going to happen. Lumix, however, we're just silent. We're just give hints. Do you remember when people said that Scott Cawthon didn't know to FNAF series? Oh boy, isn't that an outdated statement? FNAF 6 Ultimate Custom Night. The, pa the fact that he passed FNAF over to other companies. Freddy Space 2, FNAF World. Uh, it's being compared to Beyond Dairy Dev. With Scott being a positive example. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> anyway, so let's just keep cruising through this. Next piece of news. Funko Ween 2021. If you don't know what these Funko events are, it's like May 24th to May 28th. That is when they will reveal things for their new merch lineup. Like they, it's pretty much like an announcement thing, not the release of their merch. And a Curse of Dread Bear is supposedly a part of it. Which, if you don't know, there was like a leak or whatnot of Curse of Dreadbear merch coming out of like action figures and plushies of Dreadbear, Grim Foxy, the Jackos, except for Jack and Chica for action figures. This surely exists for that. Um, Glitch Trap, I, apparently, and etc. So, yeah, I think it's pretty much confirmed to be real now, I think, although I'm not too sure. Because at first, it could either have been real or fake, but. It's most likely leaning towards real now, but oh well. Grim Foxy, yep. Pretty much the Jack Jacko Foxy from Hellboy. Funko does not exist. So yeah, and Mario Bros is someone from like the Funko community and apparently the FNAF community too, like f the FNAF s subreddit. Next one. So this is the. Th 
final piece of news, except for the Nevada showcase of the mainline FNAF games, the next two pieces of news after are fanverse related. So, remember the security breach statues that were announced and you could pre-order and stuff? Well, they're apparently coming in now to people who have ordered them, and these are like, and I forget who posted them, I, I forget who posted them, but... Yeah, these are not mine. These are not anyone I know. These, this is from someone else in the community. They post, they shared around to tell everyone, hey, um, hey, the statues are coming to people now. Just, they're getting what they paid for. Hello, hello, Greg Hefley. Welcome to the stream. Food is food. I agree, Greg Hefley. You are God. We all love Greg Hefley. Anyways, um. Sure, Fred Bear does not. Oh my, yeah, Slumpus McGrumpus. Spring Bonnie does not exist. Fred Bear does not exist. I don't exist. Hello, Psychic Friend, Toy Freddy Gaming. Welcome to the stream. Fanny kind of looks like a spider climbing on a wall. <laughs> yep, I think he's. Yeah, he's. She's trying to get Gregory, of course. I'm done. Hello, Fancy Dog. Welcome to the stream. Did you apply to watch the event? Nope. Um, we might actually have time to do that real quick. Let's just get for the news first. So, yep. People have made meme images of the first image of Claremont Freddy, and that's all we really know. <laughs> Next piece of news is our news is our fanverse related. This was a, this is a Pop Goes Evergreen teaser K posted on Twitter. I think this is either Simon or one of the endoskeletons of one of the animatronics. I'm not too sure. It looks pretty cool. Nothing else really to say. I don't think there's anything we can bring them up. And then Phil Morg, this mom, developer of FNAF Plus, posted a FNAF Plus spoilers, but I give you no context. So basically, like hints. Um, Kane actually had some good theories on the the thing. Oh, music changed. I still have not made the playlist. <laughs> anyway, um, 15 people here. Holy shit! Hey, everybody. <laughs> anyway. Because, yeah. Alright, come on. Yep, here we go. And yeah, Phil did this as he was doing animation work and call it boredom, pretty much. So. Okay, number one. So the first one. Something regarding despair. Kane said that something that was the color black in FNAF 1 will be orange and FNAF plus the third one is probably like an endless mode fourth one which will probably be a mechanic related to foxy like an audio mechanic this one maybe mr hippo will be tied into this or something like that like a cutscene golden freddy might have a more unique design than classic freddy in FNAF plus and then foxy trying to like catch the guard maybe I don't know William Afton does not exist so that is pretty much all of the news right now for um that's pretty much all the news recently that's not an event showcase since we have approximately eight minutes left uh yeah eight minutes and five seconds we no, not five what <laughs> we have time to make it an event account, account real quick if we can so okay let's let's make one if we can all right here we go uh if we can't make one in time we'll just rely on uploads okay um create account hopefully so in the meantime um how are you guys doing today let's start discussion in the chat while i do this I, of course i'm not going to show anything because you know okay I just like how the at sim I just love how an at symbol looks like when typing on this website. <laughs> oh my god, we're just oh boy. Um I'll just put two six I'll just put T264 on. I'm not trying to pull anything sneaky or anything, so I think it's fine. Okay, there we go. Alright, lie about my age, I guess. 
I was born in 2005, but today I was born in 1999. There we go. <laughs> um, oh boy, a captcha. Like, okay. There we go. Agree on this device. Create account. I am human. That display name's taken. Oh. Okay, uh, put the, I'll put an L, there we go. Tyler264 is taken, I'll just put an L afterwards. Hello, Killen, welcome to the stream. You're not human, what do you mean? Just woke up in the middle of the stream, I'm probably confused. It requires a verify, oh, okay. Look at my email, hold on. Get this verified. I, I swear it was hard to make an account or something like that. Or yeah, verify email. There we go. All right, saving login. Okay. You. Oh, hey. I like when the stream does that. I like when the stream does that. All right, hold on. Hold on. Stop everything. Stop everything. God is dead. No. Don't do this. No. No. Fuck. Don't do this. Come on, man. Don't. Don't. Fuck. Fuck. Don't, oh my god, no, no, don't you dare, stream don't, wait a minute, hey, I like when the stream does that, I like when, don't, oh it's back, okay, that's weird, alright, uh, Alright, refresh, refresh, okay. That was interesting. I should say. Okay, um. Gnaf Venta Black. Put that back on. Okay, there we go. Then load back the vent. Alright, there we go. Hopefully that saved our thing. All right, I see something under shot. Yep, okay. Sign it, ah. Uh. Oh, all right. With an airplane, okay. Okay, so we're back. With a motor Why are they, do I'm a human, I promise. I'm not an alien life force, I promise. How many of these do I have to do? Log on. Okay. <laughs> it's not valid. <laughs> Something went wrong. What do you mean? For motor bus. I hate motor buses now because of this. Right. Log in. Do the world a favor. Thank you. It worked this time, I think. How the fuck? I don't remember your robot. <laughs> I was getting like a VHS video. What the fuck is going on here? A boat? I don't remember this. I don't remember this being that tricky to get into stuff. Oh, 
Come on. Don't do this to me. Ah, uh, this is really difficult. Fuck. Alright. What the hell? Is another account? This is stupid. <laughs> and that's my insight. Because like I closed it during the process. <laughs> this is not bully. Oh my god, dude. Dot com. Come on, don't do this. Don't do this shit, please. Don't, oh, man. Finish, all right. Fine, fine, fine. Okay, only have one minute, let's go. Update account, what? Oh, we made it, okay. I don't know what it will be under, but hold on. It's 11 now, it should have start. Okay. I'm gonna real quick and see like what Nathan and Johnny are doing. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. I feel like launching a moon. Okay, uh. Okay. Nah. <laughs> Steel wool. Bro, this is this is dumb. Steel wool. Why? Type it in here. Steel wool. Bro, I don't understand how. Okay. I'll find it, I promise. And I'll show it. Hold on. Security, God damn it. I should have I I wish the stream didn't do that, like cut off. And that's the only religion. This stupid shit. <laughs> Hold on. Tyler is a problem with the account. Well, not anymore. Now I just need to find the thing. That's my problem now. How do I? How do I get to it? Is this dunce security breach? Let's all let's all chant security breach in the chat. One. There's one. Did we find it? We did. We found it, boys. I made this account, I think. down United States uh, what what 
the fuck? Slut gender. <laughs> uh. <laughs> White. Alright. It's an invalid email address. It is new. I mean, finish typing it in. Right. I know I'm late to this. Hold on. I promise I'll get to it. Get into it, boys. Save. Verification. Now we just need the trust of my. Now we just need to pray to OBS that it won't end my stream. God damn it! Come on. You guys want to know what the definition of stupidity is? I should have just done this before and. What? Well, nope. Missing your information email. What? Why? Go back, man. down just everything oh that's the I just put like an extra character onto the email god damn on my email god damn it all right let's do this stupid shit <laughs> all right here we go register now save here we go Confirm now. Verify. Registration complete. Accept, I guess. Alright. I'm glad I'm off. Okay. Join now. guys all right i'll add commentary during this if there's like anything okay we're in okay i'm gonna start all wait no that's just like a thing i don't care i just want to watch okay yeah i have a fake name for this I don't know why. I'm not sending a message. No, hold on. Go. Go. <laughs> He's in the mainframe. How do. Okay, hold on. How do I close this? How do I close this? Enable chat. Like, I want to watch it in full screen. So, here we go. And I'm going to go back to thing. XGI okay. is to uh, 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 do lighting through emissive surface. Um, this is kind of a big deal because uh, it you know, gives you a, another way to light the scene. Technically, once you pay for the RTX GI cost, it's a, it's a lighting. I'm kind of wondering, uh, like, from both a technical standpoint and an art standpoint, really, any way you want to talk about. Um, uh, uh, how's that been as far as 
taking RTX GI and uh, you know using it in this type of environment. Right. That that situation was interesting Ooh. because I was creating these uh, emissive lights and I wasn't able to get the bright enough area. I I had this like it was maximum brightness and it just kind of was clamping at a certain point. Yeah. Um, I've been able to get through that now and there's been other smaller things, but for the most part, it's been very plug and play for me. Um, once the system was implemented by Joe, um, I've been able to just um, understanding the concepts behind the tool and what the look is that we're going for, being able to put that in there and, and use that tool has been very straightforward for me um, now, that, sure. now that it's in there. And, and Joe, how, so in reality, how difficult was it to take this and sort of get it into our system? Because that's always the thing that we're afraid of. It's like, hey, new is always scary, but it seems pretty. It seems pretty quickly you were able to sort of take it and put it in. It wasn't very difficult. It was mainly just merging the RTX branch into ours for Unreal, and then and then doing the patch of the RTX GI on top. It really wasn't a whole lot more that had to be done. Yeah. I, yeah. I think, Richard, it all started actually with your video, like your tutorial video on the RTX GI that I had By watched. the way, hold on. I'll Check the back. schedule. To come back. Can get you out of yep, here. there you go. Because I had a like, little doubt like, that it's not the security breach, but it is. Right, right. One. About this, because it seemed exactly what we needed, you know, with the, the physical location that we're, you know, the game that exists in, there's a lot of neon. There's a lot of this sort of, you know, on the on the yeah. daylight version of all the locations it's mm -hmm. lit like almost like a casino so having that global illumination uh in conjunction with sort of our neon lighting and emissive materials like nathan said it allowed us to get that one step closer to you know grounding the player in a, in a, in a real space yeah no i'm i'm glad that worked for you uh, uh <laughs> that's uh that's, that's 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 good to hear richard um, Cogail. Yeah. Uh, I studied that video that you made, and I really just did what you showed us to do, and that worked out pretty well. Oh, like cool. It just, okay. It was really not anything that unexpected once. Um, and I mean, like a lot of things you learn just by, or I learned by doing and watching other people do. And that's what I was able to do for this. Just yeah. Trying different settings, seeing the effects that they have, and then referring back to your video to see what you were doing differently than what I was doing. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good to hear. That's, uh, uh, I, I have a lighting artist background, so I, I definitely understand that. I tend to be visual, like, show me how you use it, and yeah. we, can, we can sort of figure it out. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, can we talk more about, uh, 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 just a little bit more about Steel Wall? I'm, I'm curious about yep. the size of your company. Uh, it's, uh, you say you're not big. What does that mean? I mean, can we talk about that or no? Indeed. I'd say... Kyle, what are, what, what, what are we up to about? I think staff wise are about 30. Mm -hmm. And then with, you know, we have freelancers and contractors that we work with probably pushing above 50 and that, that flexes with, with the projects that we have in house. So yeah, it's, it's anywhere between 30 to, to 50, depending on what, you know, during the production, how many productions we have 50 or 50, uh, running currently, 50. but you know, we were at a point when we started, there was only a handful of us. Like we, you know, Steel Wool started, honestly, in, in 2013, there was a few of us um, from working at Pixar, my co-founder, mm. uh, Jason Kapowski, heard about this, you know, uh, who thing. is also the creative director of, of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, uh, and, the, and basically the director of the game. And uh, Stuart, uh, who is uh, Johnson, who is also the co-founder, he's our lead engineer, who was from Intel. And we just sort of, we had a passion for games. We decided to uh, get a carve out uh, from our companies to allow us to do this sort of as a side project. Turns out we really liked right. doing this. And you know, long story short, we're we're still you know in business. Uh, you know, eight years later, uh, plugging away, and you know we've learned a lot. So we started. You know, my background. You know, like like you, Richard. It, it's I have a technical background. Yeah. Right. So, you know, I worked at working at, at Pixar, you know, I was a lighting 3D modeling artist uh, for 12 years. So Steel Wool sort of comes from a very art centric place, right? That's where we, our strengths initially were. And, you know, yeah. through the years, really bolstering 
uh, our abilities with you know engineering and the technical side of things and you know every project we we learn more and we get you know a little bit bigger and, and we try and you know see how much further we can push uh you know traditionally we've done a lot of vr uh titles that's that was sort of the, one of the foundation yes. pieces of us as a as a studio and we still do you know help wanted you know five nights of freddy's help mm, wanted the VR i title. played that i yeah. played that game right here <laughs> there you go yeah um, no, I, think, so, I, I told you before it freaked me out a little bit at one point. I had to I had to take it off. And my daughter wouldn't play it, so that was the <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> always that is always the ringing endorsement of like I bought it, makes I feel won't so. play it. Right? <laughs> that's what we were trying to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Something about the VR experience, like it just gets so much more intense. Um, some of these uh, people are from right, Steel yeah. so, and one yeah. of them's right. like we work in VR. Person I mean, asking VR questions. Is, you know, era. probably one of and the. Like one egg the areas that we spend the most of our development, uh, you know, projects in. Uh, security Breach is not a VR title. It was one of the, the ideas of, you know, doing a game in which we can really focus on uh, the artistic yeah, gameplay, Dayton's, uh, really expanding uh, the game, the, the franchise itself, you know, remember Scott Crawford, like... the creator of Five Nights at Freddy's. And Q &A you know, it's like, you know, year. with Security Breach, it allowed us to go in and start looking at things like ray trace mm -hmm. reflections and global illumination and all of these things that we can really push on both the pc and the next generation consoles yeah. so you know we've never we're, we'll never give up on our you know our vr pedigree uh but we're also able to sort of you know say hey this project it makes sense not to you know this is not a vr first title but you know like you look at the, another project and say you know what this definitely works in vr better so let's I can see Mon a that. montgomery right. action to here oh, that, as a studio that just gives you a lot of development experience oh, yeah right? richard calgill the Oculus, guy here kind of have to understand mobile he's the one asking and, right, questions you're, you're by the way pc rtx and, everyone else is stealable uh, i'm pretty everything sure everything else i mean that's, that's quite the range of yeah graphical needs right this Technology is interesting needs. they're, they're almost yeah, like they could be almost night and day in some ways Oh yeah, our first game, you know, was uh, Fly Hunter Origins, which was which was a, originally a mobile uh, slash you know Steam PC game, and you know actually where we got into a relationship with Nvidia is we actually built this few for says. the Tegra uh, shield, right? So yeah. Yeah. we actually had okay. a, our very first evolved. game had a Tegra shield. Uh, skew so you know we've we've been able to sort of friendship work on multiple my, platforms like still never ate dirt the great we're, soviet we're sort of union will live for the ages i think a similarity there is being on the forefront of new technology what? seems like steel yes, wool has been steel wool. there a lot yes that's true yeah yeah even, yeah, the, even then the, and now. doing vr development you have to i mean it's it's one eye looking forward one eye looking back right because you you have to understand how to optimize so for like a now, mobile I think tech device. Up. At the same time, you're dealing with new technology. It's not. Right. It's not just making yeah. something for, uh, you, you know, a tablet or something yeah, like that. Discussion about right. the yeah. game. There's more to it. I think the breadth of experience stuff. that that uh, <laughs> the many people at Steel Wall, the backgrounds that they all have. All Where is Scott? He's that. not in this. Making something feel like a good story, making something feel like a good experience. Hi, Morrison. And right. having access to the new technologies allows us to do those in different ways and uh, really amp up to the effect of like the visuals. Yes, yeah, Scott's not and, like, in that this. Death and that it allows. He's it's, seen it's this really thing, to, this to video be or look, thing before. Tell he knows about this, story. but he's not in it yeah. himself. I think we're all very enthusiastic about learning, and I think that's one of our Brave strengths. Poster. We really enjoy learning new things, and yeah. growing in that way, and then being cool. small enough to be able to I'm sorry, I just absorb like those looking new things at in a really beneficial way. Oh, I wanted to ask um, exactly, uh, if I can, which branch of the Unreal Engine are you using? Are you using NVRTX? Or is it your own? Uh, how, what sort of choices have you have you made there? <laughs> we have NVRTX merged into the one that we're using. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think we find we find a lot of developers do that. I mean, we we offer a branch, but I think I know that Piro. You, know, you, you might want to take I, that or cherry pick things out I of it. I think I know the Soviet Union. You know, whatever works best for you. So yeah, I'm I'm curious. So. You're using, is it NVRTX 425? And then your own changes on top of that, or how does that work? We merged the NVRTX, so yeah, uh, 4.25, I 
Okay. Yeah, we did use three on top of what we had already turned, so, which is a version of four. I see. Is that is that four twenty five plus? I'm I know might be getting in the weeds for some people, but I'm just I'm just curious. You know. I think it's four two six plus. Oh, it's oh. it's four twenty five plus. Is it four twenty five plus? Okay. Yeah, no, that's uh, that, that makes sense. That's uh, what a healthy channel. That's a multi-platform development I know, branch, right? basically. So that's, that's logical. Okay, so let's let's talk about the different technologies you are using, or at least plan to use. Uh, RTX GI is in the mix. Uh, DLSS is part of that as well. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm curious to know like just broadly like, on the uh, table what, how has that really development different. been? You, you, if you're it's using these, one. you know, new technologies, you're using them together. I know this, I know uh, what sort of issues have you hit? Have you hit any issues? Uh, and uh, uh, you know, I, I I want you, I I want you guys to be completely honest about this. You know, don't hold back. <laughs> Let us have it. If if RTX GI something something about DLSS is not working, I want to hear it, and I think other developers would like to hear it too. Sound? So, you know, uh, it, what do you got? I didn't believe it was going to work, Richard. The yeah, DLSS stuff. Is it yeah, just, that's why I'm looking at it. Like, it's still no your frame rate doesn't work for you. Fun. Yeah, well, it's just like I, there's no way this is going to work. It's like I, we've seen so many different anti-aliasing, and it's always Don't there's wish. always a huge caveat of oh you could use this one but it's going to do this or it's going right. to do that and then seeing the dlss technology it's like yeah that I seems feel like they're doing this for to Zoom be true so i mean i'll let joe and, and nathan talk about sort of the implementation but i think as a whole we have been very very happy with what we've what we've gotten out of uh, our implementation right yeah joe do you want to start with like how we got it into the engine then i can do the artistic side yeah, it was just in the NVRTX branch already, so we just enabled it, but and set up the DLLs and what else that was needed. And yeah, it's definitely helped a lot with being able to render at a lower resolution, especially with ray tracing, because ray tracing really depends on the resolution. Yeah, yeah. it tends to be a, a lifesaver if you can cut down on that <laughs> that rendered image size, the original <laughs> rendered image size. Too bad we well, can't that, do an actual postage stamp. Go back to like the '90s and render that. Right. But well, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like they have to almost go hand in hand. Like ray tracing. You know, ray tracing's been around forever trick a while. Um, as a technology, but you know, to you get know, it real time has been you know, when he does uh, that, a Herculean like a, task from you know, all different favorite. sort of pushes in the industry. And now we're at that point, but it's still taxing. So to to pair it with DLSS, which is able to get the performance boosted oh significantly. God. You're now at a point where we can see really, really good frame rates with really, really good implementation of ray tracing. Yeah, I, I found that when when I'm trying to get the visual look that I need to get, like with ray trace reflection and even shadows and, and other advanced features, I'm not able to get the performance without DLSS. But when DLSS is enabled, really, it's it's a lifesaver. It it brings up the present. The, it brings up the quality just because it gives that performance headroom back that I need to make the quality, the visual acuity there. I mean, unless you guys can come up with the Five Nights at Freddy's preset button. Yeah. <laughs> just press, and then everything we need I think that's uh, for our, our game works. works would be perfect. So, I mean, if you guys could do that, would be great. But OK. But we'll, that's, we'll but, but I mean, that's the thing. As, as we're developing the game, the, you know, it's an ambitious, um, you know, the environment is an ambitious setting, right? This is See it goes, uh, the largest goes environment we've ever you know, made. Uh, this is also probably the largest environment in all the Five Nights at Freddy's uh, games. Oh, yeah. And the goal was to make this feel like a living, breathing, you know, and terrifying space uh, in certain circumstances. Right. And, you know, so that being able to get us closer we're not you know this is the thing it's like we talked a little bit earlier it's like well are we hyper realistic are we stylistic you know it's mm -hmm. it's sort of like stylistically realistic right it's mm -hmm. you you would take some creative design liberties based on uh you know the original concept of the franchise but the more we can ground the player in a sense of reality even though it's it is sort of 
a fantastical place to be, the more so when fantastic. we ratchet up the fear and so you know the darkness and, and when it starts to get really scary, it's definitely more more uh, palpable uh, to feel that fear when you feel like you're in a real space. And and I think a lot of the technology that we've been using has been gearing us to get to that that feeling of I feel like I'm here and this is terrifying, right? So with the concept of ray tracing is also it's it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. You know, when you're lighting, uh, you know, raster lighting and you're doing bake lighting, you can break all the rules of physics, right? You can put lights that have no earthly look, business I being live there. Your words um, and with ray tracing, you know, it forces you to have a little bit more of a realistic palette and design sensibilities. So you get the benefit of having these realistic looking shadows, realistic you know, reflections and ambient occlusion. And a little bit of the price is you don't get 100% of the creative freedom that you normally would want from a lighting point of view. But that trade off more than pays off, you know, once you see sort of the, the end results, right? Like, you know, we have some, you know, Nathan has some screenshots of sort of these A and Bs of, hey, this is with the ray tracing on, this is with ray tracing off. And you can tell it's like, hey, yeah, if you never saw the ray tracing on, you're like, that's pretty good. And then you see with the ray tracing, like, no, no, that feels yeah. better. All right. Can, yeah. Can we look at those? Is, is this probably a good time? Sure. We always like uh, A B comparisons. Oh boy. See what the ray tracing oh, brings okay. to the table. Yeah. Let's see. This is one of our sets, and it has RTX on. And then this one Ooh, has it off. I saw a little difference. Yeah. Right. You, yeah, I can see you're losing a lot of the, the grounding reflections. Yeah. Shadows, reflections. Ooh. AO. No, it, I mean, that's the thing. It's like if you go it's back like to the one with it off, it's like it looks it looks really cool. It does. It's, it's still really pretty. It, it's from a design point of view. It's what we would want. And then once you turn it on, and that's the whole point of ray tracing, it should be subtle. It shouldn't be over the top. But once you see it on, you're like, it feels more grounded, uh, more realistic. And I think, you know, that just makes everything better and things make everything more visceral when you're playing in the world, when you feel like you're there. More. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, and this is with RTX GI as well, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so what, what we're looking at here is RTX, ref RTX reflections, RTX shadows, RTX ambient occlusion, and RTX GI on this on on these images that yeah, have great. the RTX turned on. Another one. Oh, here's the yeah. Uh, spa you're 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 not kidding, are you? Like ooh. spatially, especially compared to previous Notice Five Nights that. games, the... this is much bigger. Ooh. You're dealing with a lot more right. room. Um, what the well, I, I don't want to say anything that's longing, potentially a spoiler longing. for the game because we should avoid that, right? Well, uh, one of the challenges. I'm kind of curious what your what your largest space is, or because it's in a, it's set in a mall. Is that correct? It is a uh, entertainment complex. Okay. Yes. Right. Entertainment. But complex. yeah, so this is one of the locations. I mean, this is you know I think this is one of my well, favorite that's examples one thing we can of confirm. it. You know, it's an entertainment complex. Talk back and forth. If you it's just look at. The surface of the tables, you look at the mylar balloons, you look at the ceiling above the tables on the left, just that added sense of the bounce lighting, the reflection, the ambient occlusion, right? It just all of a sudden, like it looks great here, but when you turn it back on, it, it just has that added sense of there is like a realistic life to this, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it that just... That added a lot more to the That's table in the foreground yes, than I expected. I was looking at that part in particular I with the mustard and ketchup right. there. And it, right. I, I always love that about like uh, ray traced ambient right. ketchup occlusion or mustard and uh, uh, GI you guys and in the chat. Well, the reflections. One. Like ketchup it has the mustard. capability to just make it, uh, I don't know, I don't just feel more grounded, more in the space. Um, yeah. And that, that definitely I mean, translates. Honestly, the goal is, is like, you know, the kids that are growing up these days, this should be all eventually just taken for granted, right? right. This is not something that they're going to be like, oh, wow, look at that. That's Ray Trace because they'll have no idea what it was like to live in a world where the games weren't Ray Trace, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, for us, for me specifically, it's like, oh, wow, that's amazing because I've grown up in a world where this was not feasible 
at real time. Can you right. take back to the other image again? Yeah. And this is also That's rendered at a very high sample rate for, in terms of the reflection samples. OK. Yeah, yeah so the, sh take... the shading quality on the surfaces is, is much better under mm -hmm. uh, ray tracing. And mm -hmm. if you take take a look specifically at that that foreground temple that you're talking about, but also the ceiling directly above that pillar with that uh, that pink emissive light. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead and switch back over. Right. And this Such is that ground of realism. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. But one of the challenges, though, is that with the GI, we don't get some dark areas that we yeah, were meaning to get. Mm -hmm. So because it's realistic, the light bounces over there and it doesn't go fully dark. So that, that's that been one of the struggles that sure. um, we, like Freddy's and horror games in general, you want very dark areas that kind of creepy and these dark corners. And with GI, sometimes that kind of gets washed out. Oh, so yeah. That has been a challenge. They confirm, a, a lot of the game they that we've shown so far, that, whether it be um, still images or the trailer, of we've shown sort of what you consider the, the daytime and happy and version of all of these sets. What we haven't really Hello, shown Lucas these battle Mendes, games the game is, well, what does it feel like when the lights are off or, you know, the neon's down or you're in the dark, you know, the really dark version of all of these sets. And that's where we have to play, you know, with a very delicate hand, the global illumination, because as Nathan said, is that because it really takes into account the balance, there may be areas where we really want it to go unnaturally dark. So right. we, we really then have to art direct and curate that lighting. So, you know, it is that, it is that play of being able to art direct, but also use the tools of, you know, this realistic, uh, ray tracing technology, right? And knowing when to dial it down and when to sort of keep it full bloom. Sure. Well, th this might be an area where we could coordinate with you, just like, you know, giving the uh, separate emissive control. Right. Um, it, it could be that maybe maybe we need a, a sort of an opposite control, right, to artificially clamp down GI within the volume. Um, it's not it's not the worst idea. I mean, some I know what you mean because you want those dark corners sometimes. You don't necessarily want uh, colored bounce lighting everywhere all the time. You don't you, you don't want to lose those deep ambient shadows of that range. Um, uh, uh, so that's that's definitely an interesting topic. But it, yeah, it's something we can discuss and and maybe figure out uh, a refinement to the technology. Almost uh, like negative light, a negative like a light suck. Like yeah, light. RTX GI yeah, by like default, and it's parlor. only got one mode: yeah. infinite bounce lighting. But right. It doesn't do anything else. <laughs> so maybe maybe it doesn't. Maybe there needs the to be fact a less do, than infinite the, mode. The fact I'm not you sure. will name For this example, image ice a, cream. There's a bathroom that has Probably all white walls. Specifically and an ice cream on parlor, one bright like little emissive just thing. A general diner. And that emission kind of bounces around yeah. the room and really brightens the room yes. in an unnatural way. Considering how they saved yeah. the image. Yeah, no, we uh, uh, we have we have seen that. I think we did we we had a similar test internally where we um, we had a pure white room well, with you know light thing. source coming so in. Maybe... Was, I think it was probably a bit brighter than expected. Right. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, this these are uh, you know this areas of improvement, kitchen, areas of development uh, for sure. Um, maybe it's it, it might technically be doing the right thing. Because uh, mm -hmm. getting a pure white room Lily, with maybe a hot light a, source to the is, uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly what that should look like, but it's, it could be technically right. correct. But maybe we want to uh, adjust the technology to clamp it back a bit. A stylized one away, yeah. 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 Well, it is a really interesting sort of using a new technology that's effectively okay, mimicking um, reality more effectively than we are used to. This is like, a, we're, all right. We're used to seeing. Cinema, which is these are actually people from Seoul. We're used to seeing, and one of them games, is an interviewer. Environment. Yeah. And here we are, yeah, Richard in a stylized here. environment. He's the interviewer. The He's asking questions, and all these other people like see. came more to the right. They're, they're, not they're members of Steel Wool, like, and they're talking the about go, the okay, bring me ray tracing and technology and security breach. Intending to do, right? Doing it very effectively, which then has the downside of like, wait, we're in a horror game. Why is it too bright? Okay, we have to address that now. Right. Yep. Here's our logo. Oh yeah, you you've got more images. We're still looking at that one. I I totally blanked on that. That's okay. Yeah. So here's our logo without RTX. 
and then with RTX, it's just right. Gets, Ooh. It gets, oh, I love how the checkerboard pattern comes out. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of that down here. You can really mm -hmm. tell. And reflection. And then the the GI against the wall. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't even that's catch right, that. Right, that's that. right. Yeah, they, you really get a sense of how the the lighting affects Ooh. the world with the, the GI here. Yeah, this that really neon bad. bouncing, right? This is, this you know, is it's really. Cool. This was one of my favorite images when we first you know, doing the test. Like these, you really get a sense of, of what that Tyler's illumination is doing. Reaction on an FSV video. That's more of, than an SV. Yeah, that's really great. It's Can like you go back to the discussion. the raster image? Yeah, this. So that looks like you probably have a yeah, little bit of bloom most, there. I think like this is, is that right? Is there some yeah. in the post process? Yes. Right. Yeah. Your your this GI Scott is, on Reddit is almost this a uh, video uh, strong enough. So maybe could, this you could all almost of this get rid is pre-recorded except for the end, GI to the Q and A part. Maybe yeah, the Q and A and, obviously and live. Save that, like, but maybe that everything before that, like all this is pre-recorded on the on the 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 bloom cost. That's what a difference. Yeah. Or and that's where dialing in it. things for different platforms becomes necessary. Yeah. Because yeah, maybe we want to get rid of the bloom here, and then depending on the hardware, have it. Yeah. If you don't know the here. difference, this right. is the because this still looks okay. The right like if you if you saw this, you wouldn't question. See how it looks really. like kind of blurry as a reflection. So then this is with ray tracing. Look how clear it is. And that's the thing. It should feel you shouldn't be able to sort of really articulate the perception of it. Like it just, just feel better, right? It should feel prettier without having to be over the top. And that's, I think that's yeah, the whole RT point of ray tracing is it's tracing. a very um, pretty patina Maybe it's like, yeah. that makes things just everything across the board better. Well, no, yeah, no, um, I know. But, right, no. you know, yeah, X, the average yeah, game yeah. player who may not think about things and, and what's a ray trace, you know, uh, where's what's a raster? They, they're not Zoom, aware of it, but it just photos, Photoshop, inherently Unreal. feels or engine settings, something better. visual, yeah. better, notepad, right? Spotify, it, it, it's very hard to articulate Chrome, files, um, but it's just there. <laughs> no, you're you're more used to that kind of rendering. Well, this is a new image, I think. You, I mean, you know, Ooh. having worked at Pixar. I mean, uh, when did Pixar start ray tracing image. images? I mean, uh, I mean, Finding Nemo. It was, uh, yeah, Finding Dory. Actually, I believe oh, was Finding Nemo is my first, favorite animated um, movie ever. Ray trace film, believe it or not, a lot of it was just you know, uh, it looked all the lighting was amazing, uh, but it was it yeah. was always uh, rastered images. Ren, you know, rendered, uh, render, uh, render, uh, render, uh, render man. So. Yes. You know, like I said, the, the technology was always there. It's just it was so and exponentially expensive new area. to introduce ray tracing and you know eventually yes, global illumination into the mix. But now you know you, you yeah, got to see the old, most of the modern. Uh, well, not, no, no, it's, 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 it's the same room, but like a see, different taking view into account of the ray room. tracing and obviously uh, global illumination. And now that's sort of yeah, transcended into you know the gaming world, in yes. which. Your every here, you know, like every iteration reflection. of these games get closer and yeah, this closer is to out looking RTX like RTX right now. Let me see what that difference is when they switch back. If there's one. So yeah, this, this is good, um, but this is a lot closer to what with RTX in the film looks better. Quality would be, but in real time. Yeah. See you glare around Chico. And we still have blended reflection captures, pizza and we still are using a lot of tricks that like a KG. game has to use to be able to run in real time. Mm -hmm. but it's just great that we have access cool. to this new technology. Yeah. And I think I mean, this yeah, is one of our older, probably one of our older renders, better. right? So this is, uh, you know, the set is at this point, the, the location has been updated, yeah. you know, and the lighting has been updated. But this was a, a good first test of what does it look like? Oh, hey, you can see on. something back and here, you can too. See there's, a, there's a market difference between that these. That looks like a yeah. stairs or something. I could tell which one was which right away by the reflection in the floor and how it mm -hmm. behaved. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. And at the same time, that's something Steel that, that we can point out because we are really familiar versus... with the on-off switch of RTX. Yeah, uh, like I play I on a non-RTX card just so that. I can make okay. sure that we have, like, that we have eyes but, in yeah. the in the process that don't have. People RTX speculated case, this was uh, like an elevator or stairs yeah, down right, to like other floors card. behind the statue. Right. Maybe let you just this is like that's a little elevator ride down. I did want to ask in. 
taking the NBRTX branch, um, there are other technologies place, there that you could potentially find man. useful. Yeah. Uh, this, has this any of that no come joke. into play? I mean, besides the, ob the obvious no ones, joke. RTX GI, the LSS. Well, this one um, said. But there are lesser known ones like hybrid translucency, uh, volumetric fog shadows, uh, and uh, you know a ton of technical improvements, uh, oh, various refinements, speed ups, uh, just all kinds of stuff that's gone into the engine, uh, or things to improve compatibility. So is anything um, anything like that come into play or no? I think right now oh, it's shit. been oh. we've been working as Man. you know there's oh, boy. so many different right. teams working on getting the Kane's game done, designing the game. That I think so those technologies are something that we'll have to implement towards sort of the back nine the of development, right? We know sure. we had to get RTX, the global illumination, the ray tracing, the LSS. Those were huge pillars for making sure that we can do what we needed to do uh, to get the ray tracing working uh, and working at a good frame rate. And then yeah. as we get closer to launch, all these other technologies are things that we can look into that help us refine the look and also performance, right? So it's always sort of rough to find development. Like, hey, these are the big things, let's deal with these now, get them in working properly and, and you know, uh, solidly, and then we can start piecing Why in these other new I think they're just watching this. As we go. Probably, and I think that's where it, we are currently I find this developing, you know, I would say, does that sound right, you know, Joseph and Nathan? I mean, you guys are more, well, more into the trenches than I am. I mean, I turned on translucency to a test, and it looks really great. And I think we do want that. I like your plan in the build. And it took our player character and stretched its reflection Maybe. across all reflective surfaces <laughs> in a really bizarre way. So it, I think we're going to have to do some more development on that. Come here, don't worry. Um, and like Dayton said, we haven't well, the had the time that. yet to well, get into that. But I'm excited about that. I do think we are. I on the path to doing that because it looks like the translucency at least in my mind looks really great and i think we do want to do that cool and that's one of the things richard when you when we are still a medium-sized team it's like you have to pick your battles like what are you doing first right because you yeah. can't just all of a sudden hey you know we got a translucency team and the translucency team will work for the next three months on you know that's that's <laughs> where you start getting to the point of like well we have to sort of schedule that in and that's yeah. right. So Nathan is the translucency team. Yes. Yeah, Nathan, you're the translucency <laughs> And my first test crashed the editor and made all reflections messed up. But yeah. for <laughs> that, was, that was one of the, the See, unintentional had horrifying error, things so you could okay. experience. Yeah. Just have, like, it was kind of cool. His face <laughs> on everything. <laughs> like, yeah. okay, I don't think we want to release that. Part of me does. I don't even but, know if we could have done that if we tried to. I don't know what was happening there. <laughs> that sounds really impressive. I actually want to see that. That's one of those like like spoofs that we take a recording of and then we have like a database of like these are these bizarre things that happened because <laughs> yeah but... okay yeah i think we'll that's I, well no that's all fair because uh i, I uh, that sounds like a somewhat expected uh and uh typical development because yeah you do have these big technologies you got to make sure everything you're doing graphically is going to work with them and even develop your your look and your image and all that sort of thing. Make sure DLSS works. Make sure RTX GI works. A lot of the optimizations that are specific to NBRTX, uh, we try to you know they're they're fairly transparent or they're uh, uh, C bars. So you just put in you know it's like maybe an on off um, bit, and it's not like a major feature. Um, there are a couple of them that are floating around in there, like hybrid translucency. It really just gives you another way to do translucency. Um, it's just another option, right? So you have the actual ray trace translucency, and then you have raster translucency and hybrid is basically supposed to be the, the blend between the two. So, um, but yes, uh, we can, that's, that's an offline discussion. Probably, probably not, not a for here thing, but, uh, also, Richard's going to give us a tutorial on how to, yeah. <laughs> I could, I could do that. Could do that. Uh, that also <laughs> we have to deal with is that we're going to be backwards compatible. So when an yes. art dials in something and then we switch on or off ray tracing overall, it looks different. So yes. we need to dial it in kind of in both ways. And then when a new feature is introduced, that changes the way something looks. So we need to account for it being on and it being off. Yes. So yes. That's, that's one of the goals actually with hybrid translucency, just to at a very high level to explain that it's, 
it's meant to keep compatibility with like your existing particle effects mm -hmm. and your existing materials because yeah the like things will look differently under ray trace trans or, or yeah ray trace translucency things will look different okay. um or, or some things just don't even show up like uh other uh, Cascade particles uh, don't well, show up with ray trace translucency on. You may have seen on. that. Um, oh, hybrid, oh, hybrid translucency oh, gives you, you that back. Uh, so it's, yeah, but it, it, everything's got trade offs, right? So you're making choices uh, and decisions about how you want to implement uh, these details. Yeah. But the goal, the, the whole goal with hybrid translucency is to make it um, uh, easier for you and more compatible with uh, like raster. Uh, methods of rendering stuff. Yeah, we had the we had decals off for a while in in translucency and reflection and ray trace in general, and we found that we found that CVAR in there eventually. But those kind of things just died because out. your decals were disappearing, or they were not visible in reflections or or any any ray uh, trace. Ah, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. There are, yeah. There and that's are what I blame Nathan. Ahead. I'm just like Nathan. Why did that? What did you break? It's like, what? It was working. And I blamed NVIDIA. <laughs> you blamed NVIDIA and then, <laughs> then realized, yes. Yeah, I'm sure you've noticed with ray tracing in general, like most everything is there today. 90% of object types and material types are supported, but there are exceptions, right? Certain, it makes sense. C certain legacy things aren't there anymore. BSP, as an example, is not supported in ray tracing because y y Epic has decided that it's not the future. Like they're not interested in supporting it going forward. Right. So that's not, you can't reflect uh, uh, BSP geometry, but certain other things that you'd want to reflect, like say spline meshes um, are also not currently supported. Um, so yeah, there are, there are still some gaps in, in ray tracing, uh, some yeah. issues like that. Uh, but yeah, if you don't make use of those objects or they're not relevant to reflect, then it's not an issue typically. Uh, it just all kind of depends on what your what your content is and what you're dealing with. We use spline heavily, but not yeah. as much BSP. Right. Okay. Well, I think we've talked about a lot. Uh, um, so uh, I guess to wrap this up, uh, I just wanted to uh, thank you guys for doing this, and of course, um, oh, all right, it's uh, concluding. Thank, uh, everybody who showed up to uh, hear us. Uh, talk about uh, the game and uh, the technology. Um, is I'm there anything sweater. you guys want to add um, uh, before we close this out? Um, I would say just to pat you guys on the back a little bit, you guys have been really great to work with and have been really helpful uh, with us. So it's been a lot easier implementing this stuff because you guys have been very generous with your time. It's not like we have you know, we're not a AAA studio. I mean, that's the thing yep, that's nice. Yeah, they're indie. That, Remember you know, that, y'all. Uh, you guys have shared your sort of knowledge and, and helped us integrate this stuff um, pretty quickly and seamlessly. And we're sort of really appreciative of that. And it's, you know, hopefully the proof's in the pudding. Like the stuff that we're, we're making can show a lot of the other developers that, you know, you don't need a massive team to be yeah. able to integrate these, you know, uh, cutting edge technologies into their game. You know, even even small indie teams or a small indie developer, a, a single person can take these uh, and, and integrate them in and, and make things that look amazing uh, relatively quickly. So, you know, it's, it's sort of a testament to the technology and, and how easy it's been for us to integrate. Uh, very well said, thank you. Uh, actually, we're, I think we're, we're constantly, like we work with all sizes of teams, right? We do work with AAAs, we do a lot of work uh, with smaller studios like yourself and uh, there, there's a value everywhere, right? Like you, you guys uh, being able to use this technology and implement it the way you have. Um, Just to prepare. Uh, uh, does show that the, the, it's maturing and we wanna make it easy, even easier to use and better to use. I will check real quick. I wanna see um, how so open this chat is. In theory, you know, as, as time goes on, this will uh, this will get easier and easier for people. Um, uh, you want to try to streamline oh, okay. the development as much as we possibly can. Um, so, 
Yeah. Uh, uh, I want the five make, nights. Make suggestions yeah. by all means. So you don't five see nights. Okay, so you can't really see yeah, no. <laughs> We didn't need it easy, but it is, it is, you'd be surprised. It has come up with other developers. Like people have said, you know, how, how easy can you make this? Like ray tracing, just like flip a button and just give us everything we want. Mm -hmm. So it's a, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of challenges with something like that, but, um, you know, it's it's always worth thinking about because it's it. The easier we can make it, the easier the software is. The uh, you know, the more robust it is, the the better it is for everybody. Well, I think right now, I mean, the base level of hey, turn it on, goes a long way, right? You know, like yeah. anything else, it's always going to be how good your art team is and how good your artists are to it take is, well, that and, going and go on. beyond real quick, you know just these, turning on, on the hey, Twitter. make reflective button, but you know, it does get us really far very quickly. And that's one of the best things, right? So that way our artists really can just spend their time focusing on polishing the pixels, making it look really good and hit the art direction notes that our directors and, and designers have. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. A a anything else uh, we wanna add before closing up shop? I, I take that as a no. Okay. I think, I think we're, right. we're good. Okay. No, thanks, guys. Uh, uh, this is a really good talk. I, I really appreciate it. Thank thanks, you. Richard. Thanks, Richard. Yep. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. All right. Bye. Bye, All right. guys. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining. Fill out a short survey on this session for your chance to win. No, thank you. Chat with presenters available where I open for another 15 minutes. Recording will be on this page in a few minutes. Okay, so... All right. Okay. So that's epic. All right. Let me get. Right, let me go back to here. Yeah, full screen. All right. I want to select my own tunes. This is five nights of Freddy's. Right, all right. Set. Ads. So yeah. So what did you guys think? What did you guys think? I thought it interesting personally. So yeah, some stuff has been revealed in the chat the stream, which we will reveal real quick. are like revealed in the chat. Like, Again, these were posted after the event, so I couldn't prepare for this. So just bear with me, please. <laughs>
All right, here. All right, we'll do it in the order I have. Will there be something similar to the Strap Showtime feature from Help Wanted in Superior Range? Thank you for spinning the question. Presenter or moderator response. Showtime. Never heard of it. So, this can mean either two things. Kane Carter claims that this is um, a hint to Showtime has moments again. There's also the possibility that Andrew, the interviewer, legitimately does not know what, what Showtime is. Not sure if you can answer this, but how much of a role do you guys play in writing the game? The Scott Race Ring for you. Okay, music's too loud. This is too epic, y'all. Alright, so if you couldn't hear me from the past one, they asked if Showtime will be in Security Breach. Andrew either never has never heard of it or it's just going to be teased. So then here, um, now, all right. But how much of a role do you guys play in writing in the game? Where does Scott write everything for you? It's like the story. It's really collaborative, but Scott has final say in everything and he creates the overall story concept. When we have unique ideas, we're comfortable pitching them to him and he's really, and he's really super receptive, which really allows us to have a creative voice. The Glamrocks, or did Scott or Steel, did, or did Steel or Scott make the designs themselves along with the mechanics and such? The Glamrocks were in Scott, were Scott's initial idea. We helped with designing and obviously making and implementing them. When Scott showed us his initial idea, we were super excited. Jason Trubleski, the game director, and I are both 80s kids, which means what is retro for a lot of people were just design elements we grew up with. So Scott came up with the designs for. No, Scott came up with the idea of the glam rocks, but um, Steel will design them pretty much. Can we expect an update to the Princess Quest minigame in Help Wanted Mobile? There was a locked door that couldn't be opened and some unused assets. Maybe. We might get Act 2 of Princess Quest. And finally, for now, at least. I, can, I can't tell if you guys meant there will be day slash night cycles, or did you mean the lighting from? Without discussing any game specific mechanics, a lot of the locations have two lighting scenarios. Day, which mean we, which means when the location is lit as if Pizza Plex was fully open and operating, and night, which means when the lights are basically all shut down. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. Really, nothing else to this, I don't think. <laughs> um, so what do you guys think? What do you all have to say about this? Well, I guess that'll be it for today's FNAF News Live, because we pretty much covered everything. Everything else that was a part of this is before the showcase, and um, yeah. So, I hope you guys did enjoy. In the description below, soon, will be the sources of all of these. As well as that is my Twitter. Still my Discord server, that's not open anymore. Um, secret. That's yeah, pretty breach. This was really good and interesting. I agree. Good live. I love it. So, yeah. Everything that's usually in the description is in the description. The NAF wiki face. Oh, yes. Secrets. So, um, yeah. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, everybody.